single drop of evaporated water lifted from the sea by the sun travels to land in a wind-blown cloud. This is the purification that turns the salty brine into the life-giving rain, which falling begins its journey back to the sea from which it arose. Rivers are the arteries of the earth that bring water home. On its journey through our landscapes, that raindrop's journey cuts cold rock, courses through woods and fields and towns and villages in an eternal journey to nurture us all, all of the creatures who depend upon cool, clear water. Do you have salmon in your river? I have salmon in my river. I love them and I'm gonna fight for them. If you're gonna fight for your salmon, you need to know their story. So, where do salmon come from? In midwinter, having returned from the ocean, adult salmon spawn laying their eggs in the stones of fast flowing stretches of river. After three months, the eggs hatch and the tiny fish that emerge remain resting in the river stones until the waters warm up a bit. As small fry, they start to dart around and begin feeding. By summer, bigger now, they are known as par and disperse out along the river. It can take a year or more for a salmon to get big and strong enough to become a smolt and head to sea. Where do salmon go? From nations all around the North Atlantic, salmon migrate to the sea. They travel thousands of kilometers to access rich feeding grounds to get big enough to return to their native rivers, maybe your river, and spawn the next generation. But what makes a good river? Good enough for salmon? Salmon need cool, clean, clear waters. Shallow, fast flowing riffles to add oxygen and to spawn in. Deep, calm pools for salmon to rest in. A wide range of various sized in-stream stone. Good riverbanks with balanced vegetation, including trees, shrubs, grasses, and other plants. Waterfalls? No problem. Salmon can leave nearly four meters high. And just remember, salmon aren't alone. A healthy river supports a wide web of biodiversity, extending across local landscapes including trees, birds, insects, otters, other fish, and people. And speaking of people, did you know that wherever salmon live across the Atlantic and Pacific oceans, that the people who lived near salmon revered them and that their salmon inspired them to produce art and tell stories which were woven into the heart of their cultures. If we want to save our salmon, we have to be aware of how we can help them. We have to think about what we do during our work and play, and even how we clean our homes, what goes down our sinks, our toilets. If you think about it, these are tributaries to our rivers. Whatever we do, we have to keep our waters clean, learn best practices and keep our salmon from harm. When our salmon are healthy, it's proof that our landscapes and valleys are healthy. I'm going to fight for my salmon. Will you fight for yours?